Do, 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 do. I eat game. Yeah. Hey, Shinobis, Mark here, and we are working on the Armored Warrior in the Senpao Temple. And um, this fight is interesting. So we're going to ignore his vitality completely, and we're just going to focus on posture. Those are the rules of this fight. It's a little strange. Plus, the final blow is pretty unique. Um, you have to have him in a certain... Uh, in a certain area. I'm going to show you how to do that, where to do that. Um, if you bring the spring-loaded axe, that can help you. It's not mandatory, but it will help along with the tooth and fang skill. That'll also help out. Try to max out your spirit emblems. We're going to need eh, maybe five to six gourd seeds, not necessary. Ungo sugar will help and also make sure your pellets are filled up. So we're quickly going to go up here. Keep squeezing that left trigger so we can quickly run up here. We're going to go up this slope. Um, there's going to be some rats up here. We're just going to ignore them. They're not important to us. Yeah, they're kind of down in that area. So go ahead and grapple up to this tree. There's a rat down here. Sometimes I can get the death blow on him. Usually not. Uh, not quite sure why. But uh, go ahead and skip over him. I like to climb up over on the left-hand side here and use this side of the cliff to sort of block projectiles so that we can get up there very quickly. Press X so we can hang on to that ledge and scoot up. This fight is like a mix between Dark Souls and Monty Python a little bit. I don't know, it's it's weird. It's fun. Okay, so these windows are all breakable all the way down, but I like to keep the fight kind of in that area. Um, this guy hits really hard, but he's also very slow. So we're gonna dodge. You can Makiri counter and uh, parry him, but I'm gonna suggest that you just dodge it. And we're gonna focus on attacking him in the back. Keep working your way through the back. It'll probably take you, okay, so when you get close like this, he will shove you. Um, that's why you kind of want to get out, uh, get out of the way and stay behind him as much as you can. Um, I made the mistake of hit, hitting him up front like this and he hit me. And, you know, like Again, he hits really hard. Now, he only has one perilous attack. You can Makiri counter it, but I suggest just dodging, rolling behind, and keep attacking the back of him. This fight can take a little bit because it takes a lot of hits. We're slowly chipping away at his posture. Remember, we're not going for his vitality at all. We're working on that posture. Now, when he freaks out and he puts his sword in one hand, back away, and we're gonna let him uh, freak out and smash the ground three times. And then once he smashes the ground three times, he's gonna come towards you, and we're gonna dodge towards him. And when you're locked on, that means we'll just flip around and you should just start wailing on him in the back. Now, if you have the ax, Go ahead and hit him and then follow it up with Tooth and Fang. It's a pretty good use of that. If you don't have it, that's fine. Just keep whacking on what you have. Here comes another Makiri counter. We're just going to dodge and roll to his back. And then we're going to go, oh, yeah, so I swung too early here. And you can see I kind of messed up the rhythm of the fight. And I didn't get any attacks on the back. So it, timing is a thing here for this fight. I mean, like, for all the fights, really. But... Um, it took me a little bit to get his swings and the dodge right, so give yourself some, some time there to get used to it. Now, you can see he's in a really good spot now. His, his posture is up high. We want to kick him out of any of the windows, but this is a good one because it's already broken. And I'm going in and I'm laying in. Look at his posture meter go up. And I'm going to dodge and I'm going to try and stay in this area. You kind of want to keep him close to the side. Um, so just I'm whacking, whacking, working away. Now look at the distance he's between him and the window. That's close enough. Keep whacking. And then once you get the death blow, there it is. He is close enough. That's a big gap, but the animation you'll see when I go for the death blow, watch, it'll pull him closer to the window and he'll be facing it. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. It does help me out quite a bit. Hope you're having as much fun with the game as I am.